Now the eye. Yeah. How did he deal with that, having one eye? Well, he said at first he felt deformed. He said to me, um, he was going to do a song with uh, Hank Henry Mancini and uh, Tony Curtis in San Bernardino. And the ladies backed up off the freeway and there were three of them in Sammy's car and hit them. Then they wanted to sue and here's Sammy's eyes hanging out. The other guy lost all his teeth. And Dr. Levy is the eye doctor. No, um, uh, saved his eye. Saved his eye. Uh, they had to put a, 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 a big eye. Frank is the one that told him, if you wear that patch for the rest, you'll always be with it, known as the guy with the patch. So he took it off. He took it off. And all you saw was a glass eye, right? Yes, but you couldn't tell. I mean, it, they did a great job with yes. it. Yes. The conversion to Judaism that happened before you, right? Yes, that happened when the eye accident. He um, he he had always won a mezuzah. Uh, Eddie Cantor had given him that. And then during that accident, he had the mezuzah, and then also Jeff Chandler had given him something, and he had nothing else to hold on to but that. And it was a blessing from God, and you know that how that is. It's either there or it isn't. Sammy, have you ever regretted choosing to be a Jew? No, I never have. It gave me all the answers that I wanted to have, uh, and some commitments in terms of self-worth, just on a humanistic level, that I think it should, you're supposed to get out of a religion. And that that's what religion is supposed to be about not that you go to temple every day or to church every day what does it make you as a human being I think what I am today and where I stand and what I would like to think I stand for is based upon what Judaism gave me what my family gave me what I get from audiences I think it's a combination of it's a collage of life that makes it all work for you can you have a Jewish funeral well I had uh, the my rabbi and I had uh the rabbi I have, he's, he's going to, what, he retires this year, then Jesse Jackson. Uh, so I was covered by all bases. Playing all the rules. Okay, playing all the rules. We'll be back with our remaining moments with Alta Vise Davis and talk what she's going to plan to do about uh, you knowing more about her late husband. Don't go away. Since you're Jewish, my <laughs> husband and I were wondering, uh, I'm Jewish myself. Yes. Um, do you enjoy any traditional Jewish foods? And if so, which ones? And in your chicken soup, do you prefer kreplach or matzah ball? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I prefer kreplach. And I do, and I do enjoy certain, certain types of foods. I, I like uh, flanken. I like basic dishes. Uh, but you're a soul man at heart. Come on, Sammy. Well, Well, there's all kinds of soul food. It, uh, That's right, there's Jewish soul food. Absolutely. A good chicken soup is as, not only is it healthy, but it, you can rub it on your body and you feel good. On CNN. Well, here I am at season's end. And you're surrounded by your friend. Oh, yes. We remember it well. We're back on this uh, evening, uh, saluting a true legend. That word gets kicked around a lot, but Sammy Davis Jr. is certainly that. I change my show every show only based upon the fact that I cannot, being in, in nightclubs and being in show business all those years, I don't want to get locked into doing the same thing so it becomes by rote, but there are certain things like Bojangles, Candyman, what kind of fool am I? the things that made me musically popular through the years that you have to do. What I try to do then is occasionally I'll put in a thing by Huey Lewis that I'll, I've mm -hmm. heard, but I don't want to portray something that I'm not anymore. I tried that for many years, you know, and tried being, you know, tried to act at my age, yeah. try to act your age instead of trying to act like you're not. You have to do Candyman. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> But that song was incredible for him, yes, right? It, it was the number one song in America in 1972. That's correct. He knew he was loved, didn't he? he or did he always question it? He always questioned it. 
He always questioned it. He knew I loved him, but he always questioned the people that he loved, whether it was really real. I never knew that many people loved me. It's a hell of a way to find out, but it's almost even up because to find out people care that much about you, Larry. When things happen, you know, it's, you don't know the friends who were there when you were up, they were always there. When he was gone, I didn't know really who my friends were. I felt alone, lost, scared. Hmm. All right, so we're gonna have a mini, we're looking at a mini series. Correct. Which would be the life of Sammy, Sammy Davis. Sammy Davis. And the, what about the musical? The musical. Uh, the Broadway musical about him. About him and his life. And of course, Quincy Jones wants to do that. The other thing, let's see, what else could there be? Um, well, the music, gonna... the old masters being redone. Oh yeah. With, with How many? New he people. did a lot of a lot of records. Right. So right? I just found the old masters, and so that's going to be remixed with contemporary artists. And the other thing is that the slot machines, which is the latest, will will be. Let me write, get this right. Will be in the casinos. It'll be online for the first time on the internet, and it's all over the internet, which will be very so interesting. So you could play the slots on the internet. On the internet. And they will be in casinos, too? Yes. You ever look at, at, at with Sammy and Dean and Frank that an era passed? You know, that, that's that you're not going to have that kind of show business ever, ever again. again. I look at it with nostalgia. I look at it heart-rendering, and I really try and remember the times being with them, the times cajoling and laughing and being with Frank and Dean. and. Uh, being with Sammy and hearing how they joke and how they reminisced. And I try and write that down because some of it was so much fun. Thank you, Altavis. Thank you so Good much. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Altavis Davis, I consider it an honor to just know him. The widow of Sammy Davis, Jr. We hope you enjoyed tonight's edition of Larry King Live. Mr. Bojangles, you are not forgotten. Good night. I knew a man, Bojangles, and he danced for you In worn out shoes Silver hair, ragged shirt, baggy pants He would do the old soft shoe He could jump so high, jump so high and then he'd lightly touch down Is it hard to come back to this city? Is it hard to drive by the Watergate? Well, I've never been in the Watergate, so it's kind of hard to Never been drive. in? Never been in the restaurant? No, no, no. Other people were in there, though, unfortunately. <laughs> and so... But, but is it hard for you? No, I... Uh, I don't live in the past. As a matter of fact, one of the problems older people have is when you get together and they always want to reminisce about the past. I don't do that. I like to think about the future. Boy, do you. And uh, that's what this book is about. It's not about the past. You use the past only to the extent that it points the way to the future.